G'day guys, got another unboxing video in my stash series, uh, so what I'm doing, if you just started watching my videos, and if you have been watching quite a few of these videos, just bear with me for a second, what I'm doing is, I'm going through my complete stash, and I'm showing you the kits that I have in my collection, because I am getting asked questions all the time, what I have on the stash, or in the stash behind me in my when I'm doing my live streams or when I'm taking photos and even on hangouts and people are just asking me so I thought you know instead of trying to answer the questions and you know, taking a photo and there you go I'm going to show you actually what's in the boxes themselves okay so and I do say this is an unboxing not a kit review because a lot of my kits do have aftermarket extras in there that you will not get in a standard kit that you buy online or in a hobby shop okay so just want to make that clear and i don't want to confuse you guys that you know what i share in the kit um is going to be what you buy um and sort of go oh, what clem reviewed this kit and it doesn't have this yeah just remember that all these kits have aftermarket stuff or some of them do okay so let's get into it okay so what we got here is a trumpeter german jag panzer e100 okay i did buy this second hand for about 40 50 bucks i think it was can't remember, I think it was like last, maybe a year and a half ago, maybe two years I've had this now. Okay, so I did buy this off one of the modelling Facebook pages um, here in Australia. Okay, so kit number for this particular model is 1596. Okay, cool. And the date is 2011, so the date is correct and it it isn't a reboxing, it is a seven, wait, six years old. It is a six year old kit. Alright, so short sides are exactly the same as the front, so there's no need to show you that. The bottom side or the bottom long side is a little bit of a write up on the um, Yag Pants E100. So if you do want to pause the screen and have a read, just because you're curious of what it says. Feel free to hit the pause button and have a squiz, okay? And then while you're reading there, there's just a couple of little um, examples of the camouflage patterns of the um, Jag Panzer. Being a paper Panzer, you know, like these probably, these wouldn't have seen battle, okay? These are all sort of blueprints. And on the top long side, there are some CAD drawings of the PE um, shown on the model and just what the vehicle looks like. And probably another description here, but it's in Chinese. All right. So we're going to crack the box open. And I did say that the, the parts that I do have in here are custom because the gentleman that I bought it off has actually included in this kit some ATAC model resin. Um, resin parts in this in this particular model so I was pretty lucky to get these resin parts in here okay so that's extra in this kit okay so we have the ATAC Zimrit um, for trumpeter kit 35055 uh, well that's my serial number for this particular kit we do have some chain um, very nice chain in here Okay, and that's just the shape of the chain that's included. Okay, so if you've never seen ATAC Zimmerit, um, I'll show you what it looks like. So, what's up? Okay, so we've got the decals. Okay, I've actually thrown in the, this bag as well so I don't lose them. And we do have the PE sheet, um, just the grills. That's all you get in this kit. Okay, so that is that. And the ATAC Zim. Okay, so apparently you peel these off and glue them on. Okay, so I don't know if how well the camera picks it up, but it's almost like a decal sheet, but you do have to glue these on with a very fine super glue and stuff like that, so that's going to be tricky. You can just peel off the hobby knife, but the instructions are included so that they don't leave you in the dark with that. Alright, so just quickly throw these back in the bag so I don't lose them. <clears throat> Alright, so, what is in the box, you ask? Alright, so I have opened these bags, because I did try to film this quite some time ago, but it didn't work out, so I just gave up, didn't want to 
film again, so I thought I'd do it now. But um, and I can open the, show you the sprues because the bags are open. All right, so we do have the fenders, and this is where the resin parts will go on the outside. So it's going to be tricky whether I could drill some holes for it and slot glue them on. But we have the redeck or the replate. And we do have the shovels and the exhausts and things like that. We have some grab handles. We have a fire extinguisher. Okay. And very nice detail on this model. No flash, no burring. Um, yeah, I definitely can't complain about that. I was very impressed actually when I opened up this kit um, all those many, many, many months ago to have a look at it. And I had nothing bad to say about it. Um, another mate of mine, Ashley Hoff, he loves E-Series tanks, we're all, always competing against each other online, you know, you just say, oh, I got it, and I, say, I got this one, so it's like, yeah, I got this one, and it's like, you bastard, but you can see the barrel on this thing is huge, like, it's just a fat, fat barrel, and you just see the opening here for the barrel is massive as well, so, you know, this thing would have been massive, and I'd love to put a figure in this, just to show you the scale, I'll show you the scale of this vehicle when it's built. Okay, so it is a two-piece barrel, massive mantlet. We got some um, grills or covers here where the P is going to go on top. Okay, so very, very nice. Um, once again, no flash. Very minimal ejector pin marks. Yeah, like they are there, but they're actually quite shallow, and they're not flashy. Okay, so you know, there's not bothering me at all. But the barrel is. That's going to be the issue, it's when I glue this together, um, there's going to be quite some work to sort of get these looking like a one piece barrel. But it can be done guys, it's no drama. Alright, and then we got an awesome looking muzzle brake here. Alright, so all drilled out. Um, there is a mould line that I will have to get rid of, but I'll just use a Citadel mould line removal tool for that. Um, and we've got some vent vent caps here. We also have, I don't know what they are. Okay, we'll find out in the instructions what they are and all these other things are. But, um, yeah, very nice, nonetheless. Okay, and then coming to the road wheels. Okay, I'm glad it's not one of those eight, nine hundred piece kits because, yeah, they just suck. But we do have the road wheels, massive road wheels you can see compared to the Panzer IV kits I just reviewed um, about half an hour ago. So we've got the suspension swing arms, okay. Great details on the idler wheels as well. But we've also got um, separate hubs to go on the wheels, so that's also a nice touch. Um, we do have, looks like spare track link holders, or maybe, I'm not too sure, but we'll find out as we dig through the box and look through the instructions. Um, just sort of recognising these from a King Tiger, um, just the spare track link holders on the external side of the tank. Okay, so that's that, and that's also mirrored again on another sprue. And then another set of sprues, we have massive drive sprockets, so like you can just see how big these this vehicle is actually going to be, and I haven't even shown the main superstructure yet. We've got the suspension, very nice spring detail, and here are your um, spare track links, okay. So if you move with the King Tiger, you know, these are going to be very similar to that, just basic size, similar width uh, more than anything, so... Big, big vehicle and you get two of those sprues okay what else we got in the box we got instructions okay before I show you the main superstruct just want to empty the main main part of the box first typical trumpeter um, very nice color detail drawing or paint guide and markings uh, for this vehicle okay so you got two options here A and B um, don't know what I'm going to do yet. I'll probably go with A. I don't know. It just looks pff, just like the colours. I think find that stripe pattern a little bit boring. Um, but the paints 
uh, we're going to be using is Mr. Hobby Vallejo Model Master to me in Humbrol. And there's probably like one, two, three, four, five colours that they're asking for um, as your base colours. Okay, so that's that piece of paper gone. And the instruction book, um, general safety instructions for the beginners, and just some uh, some icon like guide on the front just to let you know what what these things mean. So if throughout instructions you don't know what they are, just flick through the front page and there they are. There. Right. So page one we have a sprue map. Um, looks like we do get a rubber band track times two so that's a sucky thing so I'm going to have to sort of source some kind of aftermarket tracks um, for this vehicle okay so I wonder if you can get some sets from Trump I'm not too sure but I'll have to look into that okay so step one is a lower hole and then lower two is a spring assembly it just says both sides you can see there's a lot of suspension springs on this thing heavy vehicle requires a lot of springs and then touching the cranks and the wheel assembly okay so you can see this wheel assembly is pretty basic um, something that we're all used to when building armored vehicles and a yeah, little tip glue them glue these two wheels together before sanding that way you can sand them both one hit which makes sanding a lot quicker as I hate sanding as much as most of you guys do and then touching the wheels probably suggest leaving those till the very end if you're going to weather this vehicle, it also makes um, painting painting the wheels a lot easier, especially if you're going to weather the inside, putting oil grease and oil stains and everything on that as well. And then adding the external wheels as well, uh, road wheel B. Okay, so that's that there. And then just repeating the process on the other side. And we also um, putting that there, track connection. Okay, so we're just uh, tracks glue using plastic cement hey, yeah no, I won't even be doing that so I'll be skipping that instruction but they're just saying yeah with plastic cement I've had haven't had much success trying to glue rubber vinyl tracks with plastic cement so I don't know what kind of cement they're using there okay attaching the tracks and the idler wheels so they're saying touching the sprockets and the idler wheels when you put the um, the tracks on so that does make sense as well Alright, so rear panel assembly, so we've got the exhaust going on, we also have the lights, um, and then, then the rear panel is getting glued on. Okay, so we've got the rear hatch, for the what we call a loading hatch and an escape hatch uh, for the E100, okay, so there's a few parts there required, and looks like it is not workable, okay, so... But you could probably, being not an, in, uh, an interior build, unless you get resin upgrades, if you can, if you're lucky, I've never seen them, I guess, well, I've never looked, but, you know, you probably best is to keep that shut, because there'll be nothing in there to look at. Okay, so... Okay, so we've got all the engine hatches going on, and all the vents. We've also got the PE getting glued on in step 13. Step 14, we've got the antenna mount going on, and step 15, we're starting to assemble the barrel, okay, and they're probably asking, and they're asking you to drill out all these holes too, so a 1.5 mil drill bit um, is what they're asking for, just to clean up all the holes on the muzzle brake, and uh, yeah, so assembling all the barrel there as well, and then just more deep more instructions there to complete the barrel assembly um, adding okay so we're looking just I'm adding some covers some, some protection covers for the um, viewports some headlights are going on okay so just saying repeating the sides and then they're just adding all the final details now to the upper top surfaces of the vehicle and then we've got the machine gun rail going on there as well as the gun D shackles and everything so what they're saying don't glue the D shackles in because they do swing around but um, whether you glue them in or not is up to you I generally glue them down so they don't fall off and I lose them 
Okay, and then step 20 is all the um, fenders going on. Remember this kit has the, the resin zimmerit on there as well, so that's going to be different to this. Um, we also have some final D shackles going on there, and that completes the build. And looking at the main superstructure, this is where I want to keep till last because this is another section of the kit. Okay, so I can show you the whole out of the bag since I have opened the bags. And just for comparison, alright, so here's the Tunisian, here's the Tunisian 5001 Tiger 1 by Ryfields. Okay, it's just a standard Tiger 1. This is the whole of the E100. Now this thing is massive. Okay, you can see just the the hole alone is as long as the arse end to the front of the barrel. And you remember the barrel still sticks out like... And just by looking at this illustration here, you can see that the barrel sticks out that much more. So this thing is going to be a monster. So make sure you've got plenty of shelf space if you're going to build this kit, okay? Um, but the detail on the turret... Oh, not on the turret. The details on this, on the uh, main superstructure or the main hole, is actually quite nice. Like, I mean, it's not flashy. It's, it's very clean. There's even like um, fan details molded in on the main deck. Because some kits are a separate piece. Some kits you don't even get this, so it's good that they have included it. But the the vents. Um, uh, just deep recess details it's a real shame I would have liked to have seen um, see through grills but um, you know, not having any underneath it I guess it's pointless you just had some black wash in there and Bob Girani so that is the hole and I'll just leave that there again just so you can see the size comparison with the two vehicles and there are your rubber long tracks okay so some people love using them, some people don't. I'm sort of one of those people that don't really like using them. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. Like, there's, they're not warped or anything like that. It's just, I've had used vinyl tracks in the past, and over time they just do fall apart, and they split and tear, and yeah, you know, it's just heartbreaking to see. You know, you're better off. I'm better off just getting plastic tracks, glue them down. And the paint actually sticks on. And that's another big big con for me. I can't get paint to stick on vinyl tracks. As soon as I was trying to fix them on the vehicle, they just start peeling off and I've tried everything. And so it's just a big no-no for me these days. But that's my opinion. Um, but that's it, guys. That's the uh, unboxing of the Trumpeter E100 Jag Panzer. Um, thanks for your support. If you're not subscribed to this channel, hit the sub button down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. And feel free to comment in the description box below. Um, got any questions, feel free to ask, because I, I do get back to my um, subscribers um, when I can. Um, I generally check up on my channel daily, um, whether I'm at work or at home. So, yeah, feel free. So, thanks for your support once again. Um, happy modelling, guys and have a great day or night wherever you are around the world watching and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks guys catch up bye, -bye.